What's up guys, and today I'm going to show you guys how you can learn ground like a pro. I've already made one of these videos, but I've been just getting a lot of questions because apparently I've gotten a new run that... <laughs> Alright, now that annoying ghost is out of the way, I've been getting a lot of questions because of my new run that's faster now and everything. And apparently the old tutorial it didn't really get a lot of views, so everyone keeps asking me even though I still have it. So, sorry about the mic quality as well, I got my mic to work, but it sounds like bad. I don't know why. Alright, so now I'm going to teach you guys how you can play ground like a pro. I'm going to also be doing this run on standalone so I can show you guys like that it works on standalone as well. Because everyone says, well, you're on Steam, it's going to be easier. But I have the same physics as you guys now, so it's sort of the same thing. First, I'm going to show you how to do the run. The run includes both of your hands. It can be, You can use your dominant or non-dominant, it doesn't really matter. So let's just say I'm using my left hand. I, I feel dominant in my left hand when I'm running on ground, even though I'm right-handed. So I, I sometimes hold my buttons in because I don't have straps, I can just throw my controllers. So I just hold my buttons in like this so I can have a good grip on my controllers. So how are you going to start it? You want to make a big circle that goes above your head, and you want to go down like this. like And like, like imagine you're flick tagging, you want to flick your arm out like that. So it's like a, it's an up over your head, flick tag down. Like that, so it looks like this. It will look like this. Now that we got the dominant hand out of the way, it's the non-dominant hand, or the hand that's behind. So with this hand, you sort of just want to either push down, but you want to make sure when you're pushing, it's going above your head. It would look like this, you go above your head like that, and just flick down, like flick tagging but down. So now you have this, you have a, a flick forward, and a flick down. You want to make sure that your body is sort of angled following the direction of your dominant arm like this. So you're sort of like this, you're angled to the side but you can still see far ahead of you more this way than this way. So you're looking, you have a, you have a better view this way. And now, why you angled like this is because you can also have a better view. You have a full view for like this around you. Say someone's behind me right here, I can see them there because they're behind me. I can just turn right around because I still have this whole side of you. And this works even if you're right-handed, you'll see the whole right side. Now what this isn't that good for is if there's a cutoff on this side and you don't see it. But I mean, you can still move your head to this direction when you're running, it's just a bit awkward. So, now I'm going to show you guys how you can balance it so you can move two at the same time and go fast. So first we want to practice is being able to do the up flick thing. I have to get pretty confident at that. You want to practice the backhand one. This is also what it should look like. Alright, now to practice them both at the same time. <laughs> Alright, so how you want to start is you always want to start with your dominant hand first because this is the gives you the momentum of starting the push. Now all you'll get from that is just going like this downwards. That's what comes in the backhand. So once you make the circle about from here to here, put the top top area of the circle, like here, you want to make sure that this hand's already going down. So it'll look like this. So now that you got that, you can get the full circle. So you'll be going like you'll be going already like this, and like like this, near to here. So basically this is just like two windmills moving at around the same time. So now you need to practice running. So first start out like this. You can just start out with a simple quick push like this. Now that's really simple and easy to practice again. Alright, after practicing that, you probably feel pretty good about going pretty pretty fast, just like a medium pace speed. So now you want to practice going faster. That's probably about the speed of an average gorilla. So now I'm not the average monkey at this game, I'm pretty good. I consider myself really fast, so that's not the speed I go, but that's a good start. If you're already around that speed, I recommend keep practicing. It's probably the flattest area from the death wall right there around the gazebo area it's pretty flat 
So what I recommend doing is just running back and forth between here. This also isn't full speed, just keep in mind. Alright, so now that you've practiced, could have been 10 minutes, got the hang of it, go full speed. So what you want to do is you just want to make sure that you're not going to hit anything, because I've hit a lot of things that are in this area. Like, like even over here, like it, when you're flicking your arms around like this, it's like really easy to hit things. So now that you've made sure that you can't hit anything, let's get on to showing the fast run. So now let's get on to showing the run after that stupid ghost came back for the third time. I was around my full speed. It probably isn't me trying my hardest, but that's like the best I could do for right now. So now I'm going to show an example on standalone for you guys. Alright, hey guys, it's me on standalone right now. So I'm going to be showing you guys the run and what it looks like on standalone. Alright, let's get to it. This is a quick disclaimer. It looks like PC won by 10 milliseconds, 250 and 261. Standalone was on 90 hertz and PC VR was on 80 hertz, just to make sure you guys know this. The run looks different just because of the headset and since 90 and 80 is a big change, just like 60 and 72 is, it's no different. I can show you guys 60 hertz and standalone, I just was too lazy. Just because they look different doesn't mean one's faster than the other one. Clearly, the standalone run did look a lot different than the PCVR one, and still yet came very close to being fast as PCVR. This just proves again that Quest physics are fixed on Steam, and Steam is no longer advantage. Alright, so that's basically it for this video. That's all I wanted to show you. Just how to run, and to prove that it works on standalone just as fast as it does on PCVR. So now let's just get one more glimpse of what it really looks like in first person. I'm going to be actually trying for this so I can show you guys the best of my abilities. Alright, thank you guys for watching. This is all for this video. And also, thanks for 1.3k. It just means a lot to me. And also... Subscribe if you want more tutorials like this. I'm going to be coming out with a slip slap tutorial since I fixed my mic.